Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In this video, we will make some aluminum parts for this Sapphire Plus Core XY 3D printer using this super cheap CNC 3018 Pro. If you've watched my previous videos, you will know that this printer has a few minor issues. But considering that it costs less than $400 and has a very sturdy frame, it actually has a lot of potential. It's able to print at 150 millimeters per second with pretty good quality. But when I try to print at over 200 millimeters per second, the hot end couldn't melt the filament fast enough. So I decided to upgrade the stock hot end to a E3DV6 Volcano, which should do a much better job than the stock one. Since the X carriage has a bit of a unique design that doesn't fit any other hot ends, I have to redesign it. If I just 3D print one, I'm worried that the high temperature of the heater block will melt the plastic, even if I use filament with higher temperature resistance like ASA, which softens only when the temperature grows above 100 degrees Celsius, it may still not be the best solution, since when you print at higher speed, you may need to print at an even higher temperature to melt the plastic fast enough. So a better option would be to use some aluminum bars to make the parts. This is the cheapest CNC in the world, the 3018 Pro. It only cost around $150. It was assigned to do some light engraving on soft materials like MDF or acrylic, so obviously it's not capable of cutting metal. The price of the 3018 CNC ranges from $150 to $350. They are basically the same, with the same frame and same hardware. Some of the more expensive ones may have added limit switches, the emergency stop button, and some other cosmetic upgrades. So I just bought the cheapest one and upgraded the spindle from the stock 80 watt one to a 500 watt one, which cost $70. I also added three limit switches on each axis to home the machine, which cost $3. I got a probe sensor, which was DIY by connecting two wires to the mainboard, which cost $1 or less. And finally, emergency stop buttons, one for the spindle and one for the machine, which cost $8. All other parts are stock parts. After all the upgrades, the total price of this machine is $230. I also made an enclosure, as this machine is quite noisy when it cuts things. I used less than 4 meters of 2020 aluminum extrusions, which cost around $35, 2 pieces of laminated MDF from Home Depot, which cost $12, and 1 piece of a 1 8 inch acrylic sheet and some magnetic tape, which cost $30. So. The total cost of the machine with the enclosure costs less than $300. It actually doesn't look too bad, but the most important question is, can it really cut aluminum? Let's find out. I will start by using Fusion 360 to draw some simple sketches for the parts. We basically need three parts in order to hold the E3D V6 hot end. First, we need the plate to connect to the mount on the linear rail of the x-axis. Then, we need something to lock this round heatsink in place. The diameter of the neck of this heatsink is 12 millimeters. I will make a simple shape like this. If the dimensions of the machine are accurate, it should be able to hold the heatsink. After this simple design is done, go to the manufacturer workspace. We will first do a facing operation on the aluminum bar. Normally, the facing operation is to make sure that the material is flat, but the problem is the aluminum bar may be flatter than the surface of my cheap CNC, but it's okay. It will just leave some cool machining marks on the surface. Then, we will do a contour operation to cut the whole part out. Let's go to the machine. I will home it first using the limit switches, and then use the two wire sensors to probe the aluminum bar. Connect one of these wires to the end mill and one to the stock or any metal that touches the stock. When the end mill touches the aluminum bar, the machine will know where the material is. It first probes the Z, then X, and finally Y. I will return it to the zero point and run the facing operation. 
I'm using a 200 millimeter per minute feed rate and only 0.1 millimeter depth for the cutting, as this machine is not rigid enough to take deeper cuts. Okay, the facing is now done. It took about three minutes to finish. Next, we will do a contour operation to cut it out. I will use a 200 millimeter per minute feed rate and 0.1 millimeter depth for cut. Basically, after many trials and errors, I figured out this is sort of the safe number, but it doesn't mean it won't fail, and you will see that very soon. It went smoothly until around 30 minutes later. It's almost done, but the spindle is getting hot. Since I used the 3D printed PLA mount to mount the spindle on the Z axis, the plastic melts once the spindle reaches around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. This caused the spindle to drop a little bit, which means it's no longer taking a 0.1 millimeter deep cut. It may actually be taking a two millimeter cut. So the X and Y axis stepper motors skip steps and I have to stop it, tighten the spindle and restart everything. This time, everything ran smoothly. We are now making the final cut as we have reached the bottom. I have to press the emergency stop or it will damage the part. Normally, it should pop off the plate, but there is another failed part that I cut previously, which is right next to it, so it blocked away. Okay, the first part is done, and we will cut the second part. The operation is the exact same, except it's a little wider as I would like to have some clearance between the hot end and the support plate. I will start with the same facing operation, the same 200 millimeter per minute feed rate and 0.1 millimeter depth in cut, and followed by the contour. This time, the part can pop out once we reach the bottom. So here are the parts. They aren't perfect. It took me about 40 minutes to make the smaller one and 50 minutes for the larger one. These two small parts actually took 1.5 hours. It's super slow, but the dimensions are okay, and they fit the hot end nicely. Next, I will measure the existing support plate to make a new one and attach the mount and the E3D hot end to it, starting with the same facing operation. For the holes, these three are 4.5 millimeters for the M4 screws to pass through, and these two are M3 holes with so we can screw the mount in these two holes. I will simply use a 1 16th inch small diameter bit to mark some holes on the plate and let my brother take the drill press to drill holes to hold the mounts. Let's go to the machine. Start with the same facing operation. Unfortunately, the spindle dropped again, and since I pressed the emergency stop, it just damaged this part of the plate. I can still set an offset to let the machine make the part in this area so we don't have to waste the stock. I will tighten the spindle and start facing again. It looks pretty good this time. Then I will change the tool to a 1 16th inch flat end mill to punch some holes. I am using deep drilling with full retraction so it just goes down 0.25 millimeters, retracts and goes down another 0.25 and repeats 10 times until it drills 2.5 millimeter holes. The holes are very accurate, so we can move on to the next step. I will now run a contour to cut out the part. It actually runs quite smoothly, but when it is almost finished, I decided to stop it as I think the plate is too thick. Since I only have a quarter inch aluminum plate, I will flip it to the back, do another facing operation, and remove about two millimeters from the back so the plate can be thinner and lighter. My brother will take the plate to the drill press to drill some holes following the marks. We still think the plate is too thick. We'll write a few lines of G-code to run another facing operation on both sides. We decided to just stick the plate on a wasteboard using hot glue. It actually holds pretty well, and the finish looks nicer than before. Okay, the plate is now done. This plate took about two hours to finish, and the whole set with all three parts took about three and a half hours. It was super slow, but I don't think they look too bad, and they are usable. Considering that this is a $150 CNC with the $70 spindle upgrade, I'm happy that we can actually use it to make aluminum parts. 
I will make another video to show you how this new hot end works on the Sapphire Plus and how fast I can print with the new setup. Obviously, we are not CNC experts. This video is just trying to show what we have learned while cutting aluminum parts with this machine. I think we've learned three important things in this process. First, use slow feed rates and only make light cuts. Since this machine is far from rigid and the NEMA 17 stepper motors are the same as those on a 3D printer, they are going to skip steps if you take deep cuts or cut fast. Second, don't buy super cheap end mills. When we first tried to cut aluminum, we bought some cheap high-speed steel four flute end mills, which claim to cut aluminum. I thought that steel is harder than aluminum, so it should work. Maybe it can, but not with a machine like this. I paid $13 for eight end mills, which is less than $2 each. The cheapest CNC machine teaming up with the cheap end mills didn't end well. It's very noisy and not sharp enough, and it feels like they're grinding the aluminum instead of cutting. So I decided to get a slightly better one, but not those big brands where one end mill could cost half the price of this machine. I expect that we're going to break some end mills with all kinds of silly mistakes, and my heart would probably break along with it if it cost $70. I would like to try something that cost around $5 to $10 first. This set of Taiwanese-made Speed Tiger carbide end mills actually worked quite well. They are sharp and cut aluminum much more quietly. It costs $30 for six end mills. It's still quite cheap, but I can get better cuts with them. Finally, use two flute end mills. Two flute means there are two blades on the end mill, and four flute means four blades. As this 500 watt spindle is also a cheap one, it can't hold enough torque unless you use the maximum speed, which is around 12,000 RPM. When you use it with a four flute end mill, it is actually trying to cut 48,000 times per minute and the spindle and the whole machine simply can't handle that. But if you use two flutes, you're cutting at half the speed, so it can hold the maximum torque and cut at a lower speed. I think the biggest issue of this machine is that the spindle drops during operations. The next upgrade I will do for this machine is reprint another spindle mount using ASA filament to prevent that. After each operation, when I touch the spindle and the aluminum mount, I would say the temperature is around 60 to 70 degrees, which is similar to the print bed temperature of a 3D printer printing PLA. Since ASA should be able to handle up to 105 degrees, I will see if it makes any difference and post more videos to let you know. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. <laughs>